We come to you, God, rejoicing because of Jesus Christ, who came to be in our midst, to show us your saving grace. Yet in this season, we look again for your coming, for this world needs to know you over so it may be restored to what you intended in the beginning, a place of justice, love and peace. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at that time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. As the party season enters full swing, all that is wrong with the world does seem to melt away with the glitter and cheer. The fast approaching new year offers a fresh start. Joy and hope appear to replace fear and worry. Yet for how many is this just fleeting? For how many would a quick puff of north wind blow all the glitter away? Advent is a time when we are encouraged to look towards better times. In the words of the prophet Zephaniah, we have the picture of what the restoration for a nation could be like. A homecoming beyond all imagination. For a people who have suffered much, though, this rebuilding of fortunes is not to be tied up in buildings and wealth. It is about relationships and love. On the pages of the prophecy of Zephaniah, we come face to face with the warrior God who turns on the people of Judah among others. As an act of judgment, it was foretold that not just land and status would be lost, life itself would be. Utter destruction and desolation born out of wrath and disillusion. Not something one might expect of God. Yet Zephaniah's prophecy does not end there. It is not all doom and gloom. There is hope. God's wrath will not last. It will be but fleeting and the catalyst for renewal. Ultimately, the victory of the warrior God in the prophecy of Zephaniah is over the anger of God. God stands in the midst of the people and, despite the anger and despair, sees that only love will rebuild what has been lost. There is no dressing it up. Relationships fail and leave a vacuum of pain. Yet that does not have to be the end of the story. It is possible to conquer in oneself the need for retribution and turn it into something that is positive and affirming. As God demonstrates, one's energies can be better used when not invested in punishment.
forgiving God, you know the anger and pain that broken relationships bring, the accusations of blame, the want of justification, the craving for a reckoning. Yet you know that an outpouring of wrath does not bring peace. It only fuels a fire that prolongs everyone's suffering. In those dark days of shattered hopes and dreams, let your light break in, illuminating a way ahead that is not encapsulated by sadness, but driven by love for you to us through Jesus Christ. Amen.